Today, you guys get to try your own hand at being an aerospace engineer by designing your own paper airplane. To design your own paper airplane though, we're not just gonna go into it blindly. We're gonna use what's called the engineering design process. I think it's pretty cool that engineers all over the world use this design process. And it doesn't matter what language they speak or where they grew up, but if people are trying to solve a really hard problem, odds are they're probably using some form of this process. And I think that's pretty cool. So before you can solve any problem, you have to first ask questions about what that problem is, right? If you don't know what the problem is, there's no way you're gonna come up with a solution for it. So step one in the design process is to ask a lot of questions. Step two is to imagine. Before you start planning things out, you have to let all those boundaries off your mind, forget about the money that you have or the materials that you have access to, and just imagine the best solution you could possibly come up with if money and materials weren't a problem. After you've imagined, you have to start planning. And this is where you bring into account the budget that you have, the materials that you have, maybe the time that you have, and the design you actually want to create. For this part, it's helpful to get out a pencil and something to write on and actually put your plans down on paper. Next, after you've planned, you get to actually build what you've planned out. You get to get some hot glue maybe, or in our case, some paper and some rubber bands, and you get to actually make what you're trying to make. And finally, my favorite step of the process is improving your design. A lot of times uh, when I design something, it's basically almost never perfect on the first time. In fact, I don't think I've ever designed something perfect on the first try. So you get to constantly improve and make your designs better as you keep going around this loop. So we're gonna use the engineering design process to help us design a couple different paper airplanes. We're gonna look at two specifically today. Then I'm gonna show you how you can add thrust to your paper airplane. And then finally, you can try to come up with new ways to improve your design and make it even better than the way that I'm gonna show you. So the first paper airplane is one that you've probably made before, but it's called the, the basic dart. And in order to make this paper airplane, you wanna fold your paper down the long way, like you're making a taco. Once you have a nice fold down the middle, you can open it back up and fold in both of the top corners to that line that you made. Kind of gives you a nice line of reference to make your folds to. And once you have your two folds, you can fold your paper on top of itself like this, and you should have a nice little pointed triangle. Now we're gonna do that same thing one more time by folding them in half again towards that center line Get some nice crisp folds here. And now if we fold it back in half again, we should be ready to fold our wings down. Now, this is where you can get a little bit creative. Depending on how big you want your wings, you can fold the piece of paper down farther or maybe not quite as far. So this part's up to you. Make sure that both wings are the same size. And fold the wings up. And there's a pretty simple paper airplane called the basic dart. Next, we're gonna go ahead and look at the stable. The stable has a lot of stability and it can fly pretty far compared to most airplanes. We're gonna start it the same way we started the last one a nice crisp fold down the middle. And folding in both of our top corners. All right, now once we have our corners folded down, I'm gonna fold it all the way down until our paper looks like a square doesn't quite look like a square from this side. If you hold it here, it's pretty close to a square. Now we're gonna take these corners and fold them in again, just like we did earlier, except instead of folding it at a right angle like this, we're gonna change our angle a little bit. Again, folding this corner to the center line, we're gonna leave a little bit of space at the top here though. Make a good crisp fold here and Make sure that this side looks the same. 
Now, in order to keep this here and keep it from unfolding while it's in the air, take and fold this triangle up to hold those wings in place. Now, you can go ahead and flip this over, fold it together like that, and we're ready to make our wings. Again, you can kind of decide which size of wings work best if you're trying to fly really fast or really far, making sure that your wings are the same size. Unfold them, and we've got a great looking paper airplane. Now, if you wanna take your paper airplane flying to the next level, you can add some thrust to your paper airplane. Now thrust is force that pushes it forward, right? So it can fly faster. And maybe the best way to add thrust is by adding a little rubber band to it. So you can do this on either airplane. I'm gonna do it on the stable. But if you take, make a little fold down here, we're gonna take a scissors and we're gonna make a use a pencil or a pen to help you open up that hole you just made. And now, grab a rubber band. Take the rubber band on the end of your pencil or your pen and push it through the hole that you just made. You should be able to grab it on the other side. Once you got it, you can take and loop it around on top of itself, kind of like this. Make sure it's good and tight. And now you're ready to fire your jet powered paper airplane. When you launch it, you can loop it around your thumb, kind of like this, and pull back and let it fly. It might take some practice, but it should probably go farther than any other paper airplane you've made with just paper. Some final questions to think about when we, after you've made your paper airplanes are try to think back and remember what are the four forces that make an airplane fly. We had thrust, drag, lift, and gravity. Another question I have for you guys is what makes your paper airplane aerodynamic? Do you think the shape of the wings makes a difference on if it, how it flies? And finally, a last question to think about is what are some ways you could improve your paper airplane to make it fly farther or fly faster or maybe both?